Hey guys, welcome to Hippie's History. We're gonna take a look at the national drinking age, which really isn't the national drinking age of 21 across the country, and look at the history of the drinking age and where that comes from. Are there loopholes in the system? What's going on, internet? So why don't we giddy up the learning and go see if we can't get her done right now. So let's start off before the 18th Amendment. We all are aware that the 18th Amendment, of course, is prohibition. That was passed in 1919. So prior to 1919, it was left up to the states, and for the most part, if states had any age at all, they really weren't enforcing state laws. So we get the 18th Amendment in 1919, and then we have prohibition, right? There's no sale, no manufacturing, except for bootlegging and all of that stuff, kind of in those speakeasies, you know, under the floorboards. But uh, in 1933, with the ushering in of the New Deal and FDR, the mood of the country has changed, and we get the ratification of the 21st Amendment. And of course, this repeals the 18th Amendment. And right away, the states pass their own minimum age limits at being 21, almost universally. There was a couple states that didn't have it at 21. But from 1933 all the way up to the early 1970s, really across the country, the age was 21. Now, there's a little movement on the issue during World War II when FDR lowers the draft age from 21 to 18. And when that happens, there's a lot of focus in the country of, you know, that doesn't sound right, that you're old enough to get drafted and take a bullet in your head, but you're not old enough to vote, you're not old enough to have a sip of beer, and that kind of really forments itself in the national consciousness. Now, first we're going to get that resulting in the 26th Amendment. 1971, um, we're going to lower the voting age from 21 to 18. And that triggers states across the country, 29 states, between 1970 and 1975, are going to lower the drinking age to 18. And then what happens? Well, why don't we look at the next section for that? So by 1975, we have about half of the country, a little bit more than half, having the drinking age at 18, while other states have it at 21. And one thing that occurred were called blood borders, which was where people in one state where the drinking age was 21, these 18, 19, and 20-year-olds, would travel in large groups across state lines to go drink, and then they would drive home, hence blood borders borders, but there is radically an increase in the amount of vehicle homicides in that age group. Now, some people point out to the blood border situation that these people had to drive much further, which greatly increased the chance that there would be an accident, as opposed to an adult going down to his local bar and driving home. But nevertheless, this is going to grab the nation's attention as the, you know, the stats skyrocket, that kids are dying, they're killing other people. It looks like it's a really dangerous situation. So we get special special interest groups, lobby groups, groups like MAD, Mother Against Drunk Driving, which is really going to raise the national consciousness on this issue, and it's going to pressure the new Reagan administration to do something about it, and they're going to get behind what's called the National Minimum Drinking Age Act in 1984, and this is really what we live with today. Now, I previously mentioned the 21st Amendment squarely leaves the drinking age in the states. It's up to the states. It's the 10th Amendment kind of thing. So what the government's going to do is what's called a crossover requirement. They're basically going to financially coerce the states into raising the age to 21. And they used uh, the Transportation Department and their funds for federal highway construction to do that. And the rule was, according to the National Minimum Drinking Age Act, that if you didn't have the age at 21, you were going to lose 10% of your federal highway funding. And overnight, the states all raised the age to 21. Now, what's interesting now, of course, the stats are going to show there's going to be a huge decrease in the amount of deaths um, among those age groups. There's a 20% lowering of the death rate overall. Um, about 1,000 lives are saved a year, it's said, because of the national minimum drinking age. Um, so that's a 30,000 uh, number if you look at the lives saved um, since the passage of this in 1984. But this only deals with the age to purchase and sell. It doesn't deal with the actual consumption of alcohol. So as we look in this next section, we're going to tell you in some states, it's actually okay to drink if you're 18, 19, or 20, but not at all. 
So we should first mention that it wasn't all easy breezy cover girl. There were constitutional challenges to the law. There were people that thought that this violated the state's rights framework, the 10th Amendment. There's nothing in the Constitution that gives the federal government the ability to lower the drinking age. So they're using financial coercion. They go to the court and they say, hey, Supreme Court, you need to knock this sucker down. And William Rehnquist rules in South Dakota versus Dole in 1987, no way, Jose, that there's a national interest here. And though it might feel like coercion, it's more of governmental pressure. The states still have a choice. They're the ones in charge at the end of the day. We should also mention, like we previously said, that this only deals with the sale and the purchase of alcohol. States still have different ways of dealing with the actual consuming of the alcohol. So in 29 states, if your parents approve, you can drink as long as it's not in a place that sells alcohol and it's a private residence. Now there are six states you can do this without consent. If you're 18 to 20 years old and you're not in a drinking establishment and you want to consume alcohol in those six states, you're allowed to do that. There's also religious exemptions. 26 states allow for those. There are 16 states that allow for medical exemptions, four for governmental exemptions, 11 for educational exemptions, 17 for reporting exemptions. And get this, there are 10 states where if you're with your parent or guardian, you're allowed to purchase alcohol at the ages of 18, 19, or 20. We should also mention that there has been some movement on this issue. In 2008, a group called the Amethyst Initiative, which was put together by a bunch of college presidents to pressure the federal government to repeal this law in order to allow states to lower the age. They're arguing that 18, 19, and 20-year-olds on their campuses are drinking in an irresponsible manner, and the best way to do this is with transparency, education, teaching them how to be responsible drinkers rather than keeping it in the dark of the night. Now, you might know Amethyst as being a purple stone, but the story actually comes from Greek mythology, where Amethyst was a Greek character who was turned into a white stone by the drunk Dionysius, and then when he felt real bad, when he woke up in the morning, he put some wine on her, and she turned to a purple stone. And in Greek mythology, the Greeks would wear purple amethyst in order to protect themselves from drunkenness. How about that? Your brain's a little bit bigger. So there you go, guys. We hope that you understand something about the national minimum drinking age and specifically how it acts as a crossover requirement that made the states, in a sense, raise their drinking age from 18 to 21. So what do you guys think? Do you think that the drinking age should be lowered to 18, that it's only fair you can vote and die at 18? Why not drink? Or do you think that statistics show that it's just too dangerous to let 18 to 20 year olds drink and get on the road? And of course, those statistics can be battled out down in the comments below. There's factors like airbags and seatbelt laws and education driving training that might have an effect on the rates the way they are now as well. But we're gonna leave that for you. Leave it down in the comments below. I wanna hear what you think and make sure that you check out other videos. We have over 400 videos here at Hit News History and I say it at the end of every lecture because I mean it with all my heart. Where attention goes, energy flows. And we'll see you guys next time that you press my buttons.